Okay, hello everybody. I'm uh, Luca Luceri. I am uh, an incoming research assistant professor at the University of Southern California. Today I'm going to present you our work titled uh, Uncovering Coordinated Activity to Expose Information Operation on Twitter. So first of all, what is an information operation? Well, these are orchestrated influence campaigns that try to manipulate public opinion, spreading misinformation and propaganda mainly. Uh, how does it work? Well, the initiators of this campaign create inauthentic personas that can have different nature, ranging from automated accounts to human operators. And these accounts, these personas, uh, create and spread content on social media platforms, uh, often in a coordinated way. OK, they do that often in a coordinated way, meaning that they uh, distribute their activity, trying to uh, amplify, uh, artificially amplify content in a coordinated fashion, uh, trying to uh, create an illusion of public consensus, uh, manipulating platforms feed, hijacking existing hashtags, and targeting influential users. The problem is that there are organic legitimate users that might be susceptible to these influence attempts, resharing and trusting and endorsing uh, content diffused by these inauthentic personas, therefore becoming unwitting collaborators in these campaigns, amplifying and further amplifying content generated by these networks of uh, inauthentic accounts to the point that this content can be even picked up by mass media and news outlets. Now, the objective of this work is to detect coordination, these tactics that, that I just mentioned. And a quick disclaimer, this is not about detection approach. We are not trying to identify bots, especially because bots are not the only actors involved in these campaigns. Human operators are also part of this game. Uh, this is not a misinformation detection methodology. We are not trying to identify misinformation, uh, especially because misinformation and fake news is not, only, is not the only content that these uh, campaigns uh, diffuse on social media networks. This is not a study on users that might be susceptible to this influence, organic users that might be resharing content. We have a talk on that tomorrow by Jeannie uh, in the Web for Good session, if, if, if you are interested in that. So let's go back. We are trying to detect coordination. How do we do that? Well, the idea here and the underlying assumption is that organic users, legitimate users, uh, should act independently from each other. Therefore, if we can identify unexpected or exceptional similarities among user activities between users, well, this is an indicator that we can use to spot and identify these uh, coordinated networks of inauthentic personas. Which kind of similarities, which kind of sharing activities we can uh, uh, observe? Well, here is a list of only five of them. Uh, we can have activities that range from similar resharing activities, so resharing the same content, sharing, sharing the same links or the same hashtags, creating the same original content, or similarities in the behavior that might be uh, similar to automation, so retweeting the same accounts at a fast pace. Now, what do we do with these similarities? Well, we build similarity networks where the edge, and in particular the edge weight, represent the similarity. So the higher the weight, the higher the similarity between two users. Now, the state of the art and the, um, the conventional approaches in this, in this domain use exactly this, this edge weight to filter out edges with a low weight to therefore create and actually identify these groups of potentially coordinated accounts. Our assum assumption is, is slightly different, and we uh, start from the assumption that these campaigns, this information operation, always involve multiple accounts. And therefore, these accounts should manifest a collective similarity. Now, this means that the drivers of these campaigns should be similar to many others. And in a similarity network, like the one in this slide, uh, in a similarity network, this means to have many connections, because a connection is equal to a similarity uh, in this kind of, of, of network. And indeed, what we notice, uh, no, actually, this is something, the number of connections is something that we can measure. And this is something that we can measure by using uh, well-known network properties like node centralities. This is nothing new, but it was uh, never used in the past for this specific idea and for this specific problem. So what we have done, and uh, this, this image helps us understand better this idea, we notice how the drivers of these campaigns, these blue nodes, tend to sit in the central position of this network, while the orange nodes, the organic users, legitimate users, tend to occupy peripheral areas in this network. 
And we can see how also the distribution of the edge weight allows us to uh, identify the discernible pattern between the orange and blue nodes, but uh, the node centrality, in particular the eigenvector centrality, appears to be even more, more potent to distinguish these two classes of accounts. Therefore, we pose three main research questions. I will detail these three research questions in a while, but the main idea here is that we want to leverage and exploit the network topology and topological features of this similarity network to identify um, coordinated accounts driving influence campaigns. To do that, we leverage uh, multiple verified influence campaigns uh, on Twitter, from Twitter, uh, that Twitter itself released before mask acquisition, uh, where we have a variety, actually more than 100 influence campaigns released in this data set. Here we uh, focus on, on six countries, uh, with some countries having more than one campaign, uh, based on their larger user base. So we focus on, on the larger campaigns. So starting from the research question number one, the idea is to understand if indeed this network centrality is, is more powerful than traditional edge weight, uh, edge filtering uh, approaches in detecting coordinated accounts. So in this slide, I'll show the improvement in performance when moving from traditional edge weight to node centrality, our node centrality approach. And uh, we do that across six campaigns and by using five different similarity networks separately. And results appear to confirm our intuition. Indeed, our approach is more capable of uh, identifying these users. And this is true across the six campaigns and the five similarity networks, but a few exceptions. And uh, most importantly, we achieve a precision that is higher, 42% uh, higher with respect to the state of the art. This is particularly important because we want to minimize false positives. We want to minimize the number of misclassified users, misclassified organic legitimate users. This is important because this misclassification might lead to penalties, such as sus suspension, banning, and therefore a potential overhead for um, social media providers. And therefore, it, uh, it appears that node centrality is uh, more powerful and provides stronger signals with respect to edge uh, weights. But let's see in terms of performance. We do better, but uh, what's the uh, classification performance? Well, what we notice here, and this is uh, uh, a plot that uh, depicts the AUCROC uh, of our methodologies and six, five different uh, similarity networks across the six campaigns. What we notice here is that there's not a unique similarity network that can be used and generalized in the detection of these coordinated actors across the six campaigns. We can see that, for instance, the co-URL works well for China, Russia, and Venezuela, but it falls short for Cuba and Iran, where the tech similarity appears to be the, more, the, the, the stronger signal and the similarity network that can be used to uh, identify these accounts. Therefore, we had the idea and the intuition to say, OK, why don't we merge together? Why don't we combine these five signals in a unified network? And therefore, that's exactly what we have done. So we moved from independent networks, each uh, associated with a specific sim a similarity trace, and we moved from these to a fused, to a, a unified fused network where two nodes are connected if they are connected in any of these five similarity networks. And then we filter out nodes based on eigenvector centrality as we've done before. And this approach does not necessarily improve the performance, but enhance generalizability of this model. As we can see, we achieve performance uh, equal to the best similarity network that we have before. But in this case, where it looks like the fast retweet uh, contribute negatively for in, in the classification of these accounts and in the fused network. And this is something that we are exploring to understand what are the traces that we want to include in this model. Moving to the last research question, the idea here is, OK, we have seen that these networks, these similarity networks, and in particular the fused network, provides strong signal of coordination. So why don't we use a low dimensional representation through graph embeddings for more challenging predictive tasks? So we want to preserve the topological structure, but we want to do something more challenging. Let's start from this. So here is the. Um, the node embeddings of the five of the six campaigns. And we can see that this approach might indeed separate the blue nodes from the orange ones. And indeed, when trying to use this 
graph embeddings, these node embeddings, as feature of a off-the-shelf machine learning lag algorithm like a random forest, by simply using this low dimensional representation, we can achieve very promising performance across the six campaigns. Once again, fusing is the key to achieve generalizable performance that works well across campaigns. And um, importantly, also here, we achieve a precision, a remarkable precision, 96%. Once again, fundamentally important when it comes to detect coordinated inauthentic accounts with an AUC that is close to 94%. Finally, uh, we also tried to explore a more challenging scenario. As of the previous slide, we considered this campaign separately. So we said, what, what if this campaign interact with each other? What if they have similarities? So we create a unique similarity network, con considering all the campaigns together, through which we created a unique embedding space. And we use this embedding for a um, challenging scenario where we try to predict users' involvement in this campaign over time. And indeed, most of these campaigns started in uh, 2019. So we used data from 2000 to, uh, 2010 to 2018. So all previous data, all, all, all the historical data, but the data from the uh, beginning of the campaign, without the, begin the data that started the, uh, from, from the beginning of the campaign. And we noticed that, yes, in 2010, only using data from 2010, the performance are not great, but w as we move closer, as we have more activity from these accounts, we can achieve promising cl uh, per classification performance. Uh, and one year before the campaign, we achieve an AUC and F1 score uh, exceeding 80% with a precision that is quite high overall. This, this is not working anymore, but you see the precision on top. So it's quite high uh, despite uh, we have very few data, very, a limited uh, subset of data. Concluding, uh, the idea here is that we, pro we propose a paradigm shift uh, with respect to the state of the art and conventional approaches. So we moved from uh, uh, solutions that are based on uh, edge weight, so solutions that look at the strength of the similarity, to our solution based on node centrality that looks at the, the, the breadth of the similarities, so the number of similarities. And this allows us to uh, achieve better performance and more precise uh, classification performant, performance. Uh, we recognize that we need multiple behavioral traces and multiple, the combination of these traces to generalize. And we also explore the possibility to, of using low dimensional representation and embedding for more challenging uh, prediction uh, scenarios. I would like to thank my team and uh, Valeria, who was a fundamental part of this work. And I'll be glad to receive questions.